today we are going to be um, adding watercolor to our animal drawings. So first I am just taking a white colored pencil to the clouds that I want to remain pretty white, um, at least on the tops of them where the sun isn't shining up at them, producing those colors on the bottom. Um, you could also do this with a white crayon if you have one. Um, is that mine? Hmm. Oh, that's the sun. Okay. Um, you can also use a white crayon. That'll produce like a wax resist, and you actually will not be able to paint anywhere you put the crayon, so be careful. Um, also, you want to make sure if you are using a colored pencil that you erase like any of the pencil inside, because if you mix the lead pencil with the white, it will um, turn gray. So for painting, you're going to need a cup of water um, and your watercolor set with a brush and maybe a piece of scrap paper if you want to like test out colors or techniques over off to the side first. Um, so I know that I'm going to want some yellow in my sun, so I'm going to get my brush wet and start adding some water to my paint. These paints are a little old, so you might have to add some water a couple times and kind of prime them up. All right, now I'm starting to get some good color. So I'm going to coat my brush and start filling in this yellow space. Now, <laughs> right now I am using a dry method, the wet on dry, because obviously the paint is wet. These bristles coming off is what you get with cheap stuff, but that's okay. It'll come off later when it's dry, so I'm just going to ignore it for now. Um, and then I'm going to do like a wash, a wet wash for the rest of it. So I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to lay down some water where I want to see these blending colors in my sky. And I can get close to the sun because I kind of want that to blend in with everything else too. My water's a little bit yellow, so the sky's a little bit yellow, but it is light enough that I'm not really bothered by it. But if you have darker colors in there, probably one I'm gonna, gonna want to um, clean your brush and, or sorry, <laughs> get new water so that your brush is nice and clean for this wet on wet technique. So notice how I'm going around the areas that I don't want to blend because whatever areas are wet on the paper, those colors in those spaces are going to blend. My sky is pretty big, so I'm probably just going to do like the bottom half first and then I'll wet the top and kind of go from there. So I want to add some more yellow and I'm just going to like get some paint and kind of just put it in the space that I have for it that's already wet and you're going to see it kind of start to spread out on its own. <laughs> that's not the sky. If you mess up, like I just did forgot that was the ground, not my sky. Um, just use a paper towel to wipe away the paint. Hopefully it's a lighter color so you don't have to worry too much about going over it later. And that colored pencil kind of resists, but not quite as much as a wax crayon or maybe even like a candle that you have, like a white candle would work fine. A colored candle, you're probably gonna be able to see the colored wax. Just be aware of that. Um, next I want to go to orange. So I'm going to get some orange and then add it into this wetness as well. Next to the yellow so that they kind of start to blend and do their own liquid blendy thing. Add 
some more yellow in here, try and get it to mix a little bit more. It's kind of gotten dry by now, so add some more water, add in that orange, mixing with the yellow. And I'm just kind of dotting it into the water I put down and just kind of letting the water take over and blend it on its own. I'm going to wet this next part and transition to some reds. Do you guys have to be doing this here? Really? Hey. that cloud. And you'll see the water kind of take it and make its own little like watery texture. That's what watercolors are good for. Um, for smaller spaces that I don't want to be like a big mess, obviously I'm going to use the dry method. Um, this watermelon over here. I want to keep that contained so I'm just going to try and get um, the paint on the tip of my brush a little bit and then just using the tip of my brush not like pressing down on the whole thing since I'm trying to do little details I can just gently go in like this. Those seeds I know are going to be um, darker so I can just paint over them with the red and then cover them up with a darker color later. But if I were to be wanting to leave them like white or something, I would not want to paint them. I'd need to paint around them because watercolor isn't like tempera paint. Um, you're not going to be able to just cover up previous colors with a new color unless it is darker than that color. Okay, and then before I go on to paint my green, over here. I'm going to let this dry because I don't want the red mixing with the green. So I'll let that dry and then come back to it later. And I can also like, you know, we're making a gradient of colors here, but I could also make, you know, the red more intense in some places. Um, if I wanted to like have a gradual, um, like change in intensity of the color, um, I could just use a little bit less water. So I'm just going to like tap it off on my brush, maybe dry it off on a paper towel or this scrap paper I have, and then just use the water that's already in that paint. If it's feeling sticky, you don't have enough water, but as long as you have some water in there, you should be good. Now let's say I want like the bottom of this cloud to have some like intense red on it. I can just go like this, and I know it's a very faint line, but it is a lot more like of an, of an intense red when I have less water with my paint than I did when I had more. So I add some more of that intensity in here so you can see. Notice I'm not rinsing my brush in between because I want this color to be intense. And um, if you get to a point where you feel like you want it even more but it's not going there, let it let that layer dry and then you can come back and add some more on top and if I want to just like let this fade out and get lighter um, I'm just gonna get my paint down and just try and use like a little bit of water and just spread out what I already have on the paper spread that paint thin the more you spread it without adding any more the lighter it will stay. And I'm kind of using my copy paper that from uh, tracing to as like a 
scrap paper underneath so I'm not getting it on my surface. Um, yeah, that should be pretty much it. it. Make sure you fill in the whole thing nice and neat. Take your time. And good luck. Let me know, as always, if you have any questions.